Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the back burner rendering software so you can use the entire labs of computers to render your scene and shot. Now this scene you see here is a practice shot that I have prepared okay, with the help of the team from Undying Imagination. So there is a shot animation that is, goes on here. Alright, all the textures, everything has been laid out. Okay, a test render will show a small frame. So in the interest of time, we are rendering at a smaller resolution. So you can see that this is rendering in mental ray. Textures are showing up fine. The lighting, shadows, everything is looking okay. So I'm going to check the render settings. Make sure that you're rendering using the PNG. And because if you're going to render in animation, make sure you're rendering it as a animated sequence and make sure you enter the number of frames that you meant to render so in this case this scene is 61 frames so I'm entering it as 61 frames make sure the correct camera is chosen and the correct resolution the fine correct final resolution for rendering so in this case it's rendering at full HD now for this demo demo purposes I'm going to reduce it to HD 540 and uh, the gamma output for this demo I'm just going to turn it off alright so everything looks good um, the file name there's no name uh, being assigned for it so I'm going to just give it a name I'm just going to call it practice render for the time being and then go ahead and save now if you notice this scene particular scene here I'm saving it on the network saying on the server address in this practice folder okay we'll come back to this file again so I'm just going to minimize this or in fact I'm just going to close this and then I'll talk briefly on how to set up or how the back burner system works now back burner can be accessed on your computers under your programs autodesk folder autodesk back burner 2017 now for your case you are supposed to run only the server okay for the main manager and the monitor will be run on the lecturer's computer now if you want to see what is the activity you can also run monitor to see what is going on but for now I'll run the manager because the manager software will be managing all the computers in the computer lab and if you can see closely here the address of the server is 172.24 by 11 and dot 76 so this address is permanently fixed and on your side you need to run your server and I have executed the server command from several PCs at the moment so you can see the PCs has already been set to take command from this server so now you can see there's a successful registration command now I've deliberately left one computer not activated with the server command yet so I'm gonna go to jungle byte here and then I'm gonna go to that computer that does not have the server activated so you can see here I got one two three four five PCs that have jungle uh, the back burner server running so I'm gonna run it on this computer here okay so this is what your desktop will look like so when you log in or when you start your computer it will be a clean slate so you need to run the server from the beginning so go to the Autodesk folder and execute the Autodesk back burner server now if you click on it and everything disappears and nothing happens you just need to run it again this seems to be a small bug with the software so if nothing happens just go and run it again click on server when you click on server a window will pop up and you ask for where is the rendering master controller or render manager which in this case I already run the manager software on the lecturer's comp so for the server name of the IP address you should leave it at localhost meaning that your computer will act as a rendering node or rendering server 
So for the manager name, which is the lecturer's computer, you need to enter the lecturer's address, the lecturer server address, lecturer comp address. Okay, I got that in reverse. It should be 172.24.11.76. And then that's pretty much it. Okay, you can add a description. I'm going to call this. This is PC14. And then I'm going to click OK. So you're going to see this window popping up. If you wait for a few seconds, if you enter the address properly, you should see this registration to 172.24.11.76 accepted. So right now I have a total of six computers which is being commanded by the render manager. So if I go back to the render manager, you can see here one, two, three, four, five, six, actually seven. Now I've got seven computers that is running on the back burner manager. Okay, but how do you monitor whether how many computers are being are running? You can run the monitor software. So the monitor software can be accessed from your computer or in this case I'm accessing from the lecturer's com uh, back burner and then I'm going to run the monitor at this stage you can see there's nothing on the monitor because you need to connect to the manager so if you click on the connect button okay, because this has been previously set to connect to the uh, manager already if I click on connect you can see the address has already been keyed in the port you can leave it at, def at the default so if you want to run the monitor, you can do it on your desktop as well. And then I'm just going to click OK. And then you can see all these yellow icons here. This will represent the computers that are available and ready to take command or re ready to take the render uh, commands. And then these are the previous render jobs that was done. And these are the job details like in this instance this scene was rendered by all these computers and how long it took for each of the computers okay so now let's try sending a command but in this case you guys will be sending up the short commands to the render manager so I'm going to take control of one of the computers okay in this case I'm gonna choose a computer that is in the corner I'm gonna take PC 11 and I'm going to load the file okay, from the server so let's go and find the file first okay in this case uh, I'm gonna go back to my own computer I already turned off my Maya file so go to the server and locate the file Okay, go to the folder and I place the practice file here in the render practice and this is the file that I placed here so go to back burner practice double click on it to open it so if your scene in short contains a lot of objects or references it's gonna take some time to load up and also if you are loading this from a network please take note that there is a maximum 20 PC connection limit and once you have sent in your command you can actually uh, close the file because okay right now for this reference you notice that this is referencing to a C drive Okay, because I previously loaded this file, I can ignore this reference, or I can skip this one. Okay, all those references that go to the C drive, I'm gonna skip this. Okay, if you're working on your final files, you should make sure that all your references are, the links are fixed before you send it out for final render. Okay, right now, if you can look at the activity here, it's loading all the references.
okay so now I have all my files loaded up I can actually there's a few more steps that you need to do before you send for render okay when I load this file in the lecturer's computer everything works now I'm reading this file directly off the server so the next thing I want to do is to set the project setting the project will determine when this shot in particular where the files will be rendered to so I'm gonna click on file and click on set project and when you're setting up your project you make sure you key in the server address because we are gonna render this to the server okay let's try that again we need to set the project again okay if you find that this is too too tedious to key in one way would be to go to your file explorer where we previously accessed the file click on the window here and then copy this link go back to Maya itself and then paste the link over okay and go ahead and press enter Okay, I'm gonna go back to set project again. Okay, right now I'm going into the network already. So locate the render practice folder and locate the folder. You need to create a brand new folder for each of the shot that you're rendering to. So in this case, my practice shot, I'm gonna pretend that this is scene one shot one. So I'm gonna rendering render into this folder and then I'm just gonna hit set the project okay there's one more thing that you need to check is to make sure that your project window click on project window check that the location is being rendered to is the correct location so it's going to be rendered into this project folder which is the scene one shot one into the render practice location so all the files that will be rendered will be dumped into this images folder so once that is satisfied you just click accept go to the render settings again and check that everything is correct we are rendering frame 1 to frame 61 okay because this shot is 61 frames okay all the previous settings that I've done is still the same okay we are going to render it as a PNG format okay once you're satisfied with that you can hit close and from here we can send our back burner render command so go ahead and go to change it to rendering click on render and then click on the last option here called create back burner job and then you can save save the scene file okay I'm gonna override this practice file Okay, once it has been saved, a new window will pop out. Okay, if this is a student version that you're using, just click on save and then you end up with this uh, back burner for Maya window. Okay, the job name is randomly created. Okay, the description you can give it a name called scene one, shot one if you want. And the priority is 50%. If this shot is the very important you can put it at maximum priority at 100% naturally we already set the number of frames so from frame 1 to frame 61 now task size 12 that means that one computer will handle 12 frames now if you want one computer to handle one frame at a time then you reduce the task size to 1 okay renderer from the scene file now in this scene right we are using Maya so the renderer will read from the scene file and then it will use Maya to render. Additional options if you know the script commands for the back burner, you can enter it. But this stage, you can leave it empty. Manager name, please make sure you enter the correct manager address. So in this case, it's 172.24.11.76. Everything else, you can leave it as default. And once you're done, you can click on 
submit job and close. Okay, wait a few seconds and the window should disappear. Now, if the window hangs over there, please notify your instructor and uh, that simply means your Maya has crashed and there's a possibility that the manager server might have to be restarted. But now we already sent the command. We can check the monitor. So I want to minimize this one. Let's go back. Now I'm back to the lecturer's computer. We can click on the monitor. And you can see there's a command, the back burner practice, which uh, the, the file, the scene file that is being sent out is active and it's green in color. Green is a good sign. It simply means that the job is being actively done. If you click on the job, okay, if I click on it, and we look on the right hand side here, you can see that now frame one to frame seven, each frame is being assigned to each of the computers that are available for rendering. And it will show you the percentage. So because w there's going to be 61 frames to be rendered, it's going to take a while. Okay, so one of the computers already completed. It took about 1 minute and 13 seconds to render. So I'm expecting frame 2 and you can see very rapidly once the frame is rendered as second frame will be assigned to any of the free computers. The status of all the computers can be seen at the bottom here. So all of them are green. That means they are doing their job. So another thing that we need to check now to see whether the frames are being rendered onto the lecturer's computer or the server. So you go back to check. So I'm going back to the render practice folder under the scene one shot one. Go inside and check the images folder. And there you should be able to see the rendered frames sh being shown. And to verify, you can click to show details and you can see the timing. And everything seems to be in order. Okay, and also the numbering is correct. There might be instances that due to interruptions to the servers, some of the frames might not be rendered properly. So if you ever encountered that, okay, it would be a good idea to go to your render files or rather your render settings in your scene file and enable this option called skip existing frames. So all you need to do is once you hit skip existing frames, save the scene file and then you can go ahead and run the the back burner command again. Just go to render and then execute the back burner job again. So it will run the whole thing again and it will check for any existing files. If you see a file that is there, you can it will skip and then for the missing files, you will just re-render uh, re only the missing files. Now, sometimes the renders, in the renders, you might end up with frames that are corrupted. That means that physically there is a file there. However, it is a one kilobyte file or it is just a black frame. So you might have to go into the frame itself, delete away the frame and run the render command again or the back burner job again. And the back burner will take care of re-rendering the missing files. So that is how you set it up and everything seems to be going smoothly. Now, if you have a lot of frames or if you have all the computers available for you to render, there are some instances that you might see some red warning messages. Okay, so some of the red warning messages simply means that the network right is overtaxed that means that more than 20 computers are trying to send a command to the server at the same time. So sometimes the manager right, will not be able to handle more than 20 commands received at the same time. So you don't have to worry. Just make sure that all the files that are supposed to be rendered are inside your folder. So you can check over here. The progress now is 32%. Okay, so we are making good progress. And you can see the task summary, you can see that from frame 1 to frame 20, the files or now in this case is frame 21 is being done. And the subsequent files are being assigned to each of the individual computers.
Okay, so let's check the files again. I'm going to switch over to icon display and you can click on individual file and then you can use the cursor to check that all the frames are being rendered properly okay there seems to be some issue with the files I'm gonna go back to PC 11 where the file is being was loaded Okay, although the files are being rendered there, it doesn't seem to be any animation that is going on. So I'm just going to resolve this. But the act of sending the back burner job is working. So that is fine. So you guys can use this video to set up your back burner renders. But as I've mentioned, I seem to notice a problem because all the files seems to be the same and there is no animation going on so I have to go back and investigate so I'm going to stop this job so to kill the job I'm going to select this job and then under the kill monitor delete the job and then say yes so I've killed the job so now all the computers are available again so now the issue here is there is no animation okay where there is some animation that is running in the scene itself. Now I couldn't access PC 11. I'm going to try PC 12 instead. So I'm reloading this on another computer. So there's a chance that I will have to, in fact, I will have to re-render all this again. So I'm going to select all these files. I'm going to delete them ag again. Okay, I'm going to ignore these references because these are old references from the animation side. Uh, okay, I think I know why this is not working, but okay, let's just load it up first. Okay, so now I realize my mistake. I didn't have 61 frames to render. I actually supposed to be rendering from frame 44 to frame 61. So that was my mistake. So let's do that again. Let's just uh, change the render setup. I got disconnected again but anyway I'm gonna physically go to that computer and let's see whether I can connect to this one I can't
Okay, I'm gonna manually go over to the other computer. I'm gonna just and I'm gonna end this compute. Wait, I'm gonna go to that computer. I'm gonna send the command and I'm gonna come back again. Okay, so what have I done? I went back to the computer, set the project again, back to the network, and uh, instead of rendering 1 to 61, I'm now rendering from frame 44 to 61. So if we could click on the Q monitor again, you can see that this time there are much less frames. From frame 44, I'm going to render to frame 61. And again, everything is assigned. Okay, there should be. Okay, so you can see now the frames are starting to appear. They are still being rendered though because each of the computers will have to load the scene, the sets, the props, and the characters, and then start to render. But once the machines have loaded everything, the subsequent frames should be quite fast. Okay, so we are having several uh, frames already done. But this time, I should be able to see some animation. Yes. So earlier on, we were just rendering the same frame over and over again. So let's look at the monitor again. So it shouldn't take too long, a couple more minutes, and then the whole process should be over. So far, the progress, 38%. Okay, so far most of the frames are done. Now we left a few more frames and then the animation will be done. So over here I'm just using the Windows image viewer and then using the cursor to review each of the frames. Okay, we have four more frames being uh, chosen to render. So we can see on average each frame take about one minute, 10 seconds or one minute, uh, seven seconds to render.
okay the last four frames are being rendered and they are being finished and then that's it so now the next thing you need to do is to check and ensure that all the frames are in order so you can use the image editor to just use a cursor to check or you can use another program which is available inside your AST folder under useful software there is this software called virtual dark you don't have to install it you just need to run it immediately Cop make a copy of this then drag the first frame of the image sequence okay, drag the first frame into the virtual dub and you can scrub back and forth to preview so if there's a problem you virtual dub will stop at the frame that has a problem so there are a total of 80 frames in this shot and everything seems to be in order nothing out of the ordinary so that's how you set up your back burner rendering software so we will be setting this up usually at the end of the day or before you leave class so that you can send in all your render commands and when you come back from for class the next day you check and make sure that all the frames are rendered out and if not then you have to send the command again to render any missing frames okay so I hope this will clear any uh, doubts on how to use this feature